Hello and welcome to the show. So today's challenge, this is filmed quite a while ago by the way, um, is a hill climb rally on Forza 4. We are doing this proper rally styly, so they're taking it in turns in launching off the line. The way that this is going to be timed is a little bit difficult to work with, shall we say. Forza doesn't really do sort of time trial kind of rally style uh, races, so I'm having to manually time each of the cars. As you saw there, the start procedure is each car was kind of crawled up to the line or go up to the line, stop, uh, make sure the car is stationary and then go. And then after the race, I would have to go and manually time each vehicle. Uh, or work out the time, shall I say, from the time they started to the time they crossed the line. Um, it's a little bit complicated, it took a long, long time calculating the results of this, but it does make it a proper sort of ratty time trial um, thing. That's the best I can come up with it, come up to describe it. Yeah, whatever. Um, I think it's kind of cool. Anyway, there was, there, I think there's 14 of us um, who were taking part in this. Uh, the cars are S-Class, which means you can have an awful lot of upgrades on them. I'm not a fan of running particularly high classes um, when it comes to races, normally because everybody just builds the car in the same way. You put all the handling parts on, and then you put engine parts until you run out of PI. I'm not a particular fan of that. I prefer running the slower, the lower class cars, um, where you actually have to kind of make compromises, you have to make choices uh, on them. However, for rallying, you need a bit of speed um, <laughs> to, keep things, to keep things interesting. So we were allowed to run or allowed the cars to be S class, which means that there is quite a lot of powerful vehicles on here. Um, and yeah, there was a good variety. At, at the start, we got some more your traditional sort of rally rallying vehicles. Uh, we have a Hyundai Veloster here. Um, there was uh, an Escort Cosworth earlier, and I think the Audi TT was four-wheel drive as well. It does bring up some interesting interesting decisions. Do you go for a car that's four-wheel drive as this uh, Veloster gets very, very close to the wall? That was a little bit tight. So you're going to go for a slide. Yep, he's going to go for a slide uh, around the next corner, very, very close to the wall again. I'm not sure that's the quickest line around these corners, but never mind. Um, yeah, this competition does... Uh, bring up an interesting choice of vehicle, shall we say. There was no rules other than it had to be S-Class, so you could use any car you wanted. There was quite a lot of kind of traditional rally cars. You have Velosters, there are some old Group B cars in here, um, and the like. So you could go for a four-wheel drive car. With a four-wheel drive car, you have a lot of, shall we say, punch out of a corner. Um, however, they do tend to understeer, they do tend to be a little bit heavy. And this is an odd bit of an odd one out. Uh, someone's running a Tesla Roadster. If you can hear any noise in the background, uh, that would be, I think it was my car that was next in the line. Uh, it's not the Tesla suddenly sprung an engine. It is just, just the background noise from other cars. Oh no, it was the laggy star, that's what it was. Um, yeah, um, yeah. You have, to, you have to make a choice. Do you go for a two-wheel drive car that will probably be a little bit better handling? Um, you also can... You have slightly lower PI if you use a two-wheel drive car over a four-wheel drive car. So you can have better handling, slightly more possibilities for upgrades, maybe. However, running S-Class, you're probably going to have quite a powerful rear-wheel drive car. It can be a little bit trickier to control. If you're running a four-wheel drive car, um, this is this is what I'm using. Of course, it's going to be a 205 MT16. You can pretty much be you can pretty much floor it out of every single corner. Uh, you can put the power down very, very easily without too much too many troubles. Um, and that is an advantage when you are going up the tight, twisty roads uh, out for Jimmy. However, your car is a little bit heavier. It will probably be a little bit more understeer. The 205s are great cars. For a four-wheel drive car, they really are not that bad for understeer. However, they're still not as good handling as a, as a rear-wheel drive car. So yeah, you, you had to make a choice, and that's what that's what I liked about uh, I like about this when when you have to kind of choose, make compromises, and that kind of thing uh, for building a car. It always creates interesting racing, or in this case, time attacking, if if that's a thing. Um, anyway, yes, my 205. I do like these cars; they are fantastic things to drive. I'm not a massive fan of for Jimmy though. I much like with Nurburgring. Similar problems I have with Nurburgring really. Uh, this is such a, a long track. I can't remember all the blooming corners and the braking zones. There's no braking boards for anything. And of course, we don't have a co-driver like you would have in a proper rally. So yeah, I'm not a massive fan of this track. I haven't really driven it a huge amount, so I'm not very experienced around here. But uh, yeah, it's the closest we have to to rally stages. We have an, another one of the Group B cars, a Ford RS200. These are quite popular. I think there's a couple of these and there's a couple of the 205s. Um, which is good to see. Um, good to see some of the some of the old rally cars. The RS200 never really that successful a rally car. 
I, we, I think we've talked about this a while ago, we talked about this car. Uh, it never really did particularly well because it was a latecomer to the, the Group B party, shall we say. Never had a chance to really be developed properly before they cancelled the class. So it was never that much of a success in actual Group B rallying. However, around here they were pretty good. We have another Hyundai Veloster. I saw one of these, actually. It, there's one in my village now, I think. Bright green. I do quite like the Veloster. They are... They're different. They try, they try something a little bit different. I still think the door thing is utterly, utterly stupid. When I talked about this last time, some people were saying in the comments, they said the reason why they have uh, one door, uh, an extra door on one side, is for unloading passengers. So they unload onto the pavement rather than out into the road. That is some of the most stupidest idea, the stupidest health and safety gone berserk kind of thing. If you can't open a door and get out of a car um, safely, that's just natural selection. You don't... <laughs> it's not hard to look to see if there's anything coming. But um, anyway, that's enough of that rant on that car. Um, that was the first run, and he, the, here are, how are the results of this. Uh, Ford RS200 was the fastest up the hill, while a Pagani Zonda came second. Then it was followed by the two 205s. Audi TT uh, did fairly good as well, the Escort Cosmic and the other Ford RS200. I, the way this sort of film, this is a little bit more complicated than normal, don't worry, you'll see the rest of the cars on the next run. We were doing both the old hill climb and the new hill climb, and I can't remember which order that. I think that was the new hill climb, the first one, uh, on the more sort of tight and twisty circuit. It's the new hill climb and the other one's the old. I can't blooming remember. I don't really drive that often around here. Then uh, we have Hyundai Velostar. Uh, so there's a Skyline in there, a Mustang. Yeah, there was a Mustang. Uh, Ferrari, another Velostar. The Tesla didn't come last, amazingly. Um, an interesting choice of vehicle for a hill climb. And uh, a Lotus Exceed was down at the bottom. I think they had some problems. Now, yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the time from the first run. And then we're going to add on the times for the second run. This is where things get all the, all the complicatedness. Um, trying to calculate, calculate all of the scores. I think it took longer to do all the scores than it did for all of the cars to go up the hill. It, oh, it was a nightmare trying to calculate it all. Um, anyway... We move on to the second run. This is a more fast and flowing run. The first one was kind of very tight and twisty. Uh, this is slightly different. There was some laggy issues, as you can see with this uh, RS200 that's doing all sorts of oddness uh, around the track. Now, for this kind of event, that's not so much of a problem. As we are kind of taking it in turns to go up the hill, is you will you can still sometimes come out, come across traffic, but uh, it's not. Not such a co common occurrence. So the fact that the car is lagging about and jumping a little bit isn't too much of an issue as he's got no one uh, around him. So, yeah, the lag wasn't so much of a problem um, in this event. But, yeah, it's an unavoidable thing when it comes to Ford and it does sometimes ruin uh, the replays and for videoing purposes. The Zonda, actually, I was very, very surprised by the Zonda. I'm sure I know the Zonda's a quick car, it's a good handling car. I wasn't expecting it to be as quick as it was on the first run, to be up there, if I came second, up there with the likes of the proper rally cars. Um, because, yeah, I was supposed to be too, too tricky to drive, be too oversteery, you'd have difficulties putting the power down. It also starts off as an S class car, so you don't have a huge uh, kind of amount of upgrades you can put on it I don't know if he's running race tires or not but if you were to put race tires on this car I can't imagine you can do much else although it is a very very quick car so yeah that's that's, that's kind of kind of an advantage as well continuing with the supercars uh, we had a Ferrari F40 in here as well uh, this is a fantastic we've said this many many times on here everybody loves the Ferrari F40 it really is a very 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 good car again maybe not the the first choice for hill climbing, uh, I I wouldn't have thought of using using an F40. Again, similar problems as as with the Zonda. Rear wheel drive is going to be a little bit slidey. Again, starts in S class, so you don't have a huge amount of upgrades you can do it do to it. Sorry. However, it was still making good progress um, through through the course. It's probably the best sounding car that we had here. I can't can't think of much would have beat it um, for for the kind of engine. There was a Mustang, as I said before, and in another very, very interesting choice. Uh, I wouldn't have used a Mustang for, for hill climbing. We're still making fairly good progress um, as well. Yeah, by running this sort of as an open anything goes kind of thing, we did get some, some interesting, interesting vehicles. As I did mention before as well, you could come across uh, some, some traffic on, on your run. I think, on the most part, people were pretty good. If someone caught up to the back of them, they'd move out of the way. We didn't have too many issues with people actually catching up to each other. There was, a, I think it was about a 10-second roll-off delay 
So you had a little bit of time between each car going and you were unlikely. It wasn't that often that someone was that much faster to catch up to the back of you. But it, is, it happens in real rallying as well, uh, catching up to people. There was another 205. I said, this is Husky is uh, is driving this one. Always good to see <laughs> another 205. Yeah, these cars are really quite good uh, at this kind of thing. The 205 is um, an interesting one, despite the fact that it is four-wheel drive. I said this many times before. It does handle very, very well, which is useful. It is very useful when you are <laughs> when you are on this kind of course. As Husky sliding his, I'm not sure if he actually hit the wall there or if that was genuinely on two wheels coming over over the bump. I'm not a massive fan of this second part in particular. I just didn't do particularly well <laughs> on this second run. However, Husky's 205 was absolutely flying through this run. It is quite a pretty circuit um, <laughs> around here. It's an interesting, interesting track to drive, but uh, yeah, I, I was struggling a little bit. Uh, this Skyline as well was having a, a few issues and got things a little bit wrong. And I think it's, it's engine smoking. I think it is uh, at this point. Got things a little bit wrong. And uh, yeah, damages on simulation got things very wrong through there. Uh, took, took a little bit too close to the wall and got massive airtime and couldn't do anything about it. Um, yeah, the damage was on simulation, so if you smacked your car up at the start of the run, you were going to be in trouble for the rest of the run. And seeing as we don't have any co drivers and not some of us weren't particularly experienced with this course, I don't know who has who has spent many hours on here and who hasn't. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit tricky to be pushing these rather fast cars to the limits on a track that you uh, that you don't really know. There was a, a Lotus Exige. I was actually surprised at the lack of Lotus, Lotus, lo, lo, whatever. Um, <laughs> as I was, I was thinking these were probably uh, there's going to be many of these. There normally is when we do blooming um, race events. However, there was only one. Unfortunately, this guy here lagged out before the end of this of the second run he only managed to uh, uh, take part in the first one there was a couple more cars as well that were supposed to uh, be in here there was a McLaren, you might have seen at uh, the opening shot there was a McLaren F1 I think it was an F1 GT and there was a Saab I mentioned briefly both of them lagged out before finishing the first run this guy here lagged out before finishing the second one yeah the, the Forza servers get on my nerves sometimes so sorry to the people who, uh, who are trying to take part in this but uh, for various reasons they couldn't this is the results from the second run up the hill. Uh, again, the same guy won in the RS200. That was the white, uh, slightly laggy, jumpy <laughs> the RS200. Audi TT this time uh, came up in the second. The Huskies, Peugeot was in third. And then we have a Pagani Zonda in fourth. It was very good. Both runs were very good um, for the Zonda. I was very, very impressed and surprised by that one. Uh, Escort Cosworth. Again, the times were, really weren't that. There wasn't a huge amount of difference. Okay, between fourth and fifth, there was a fairly big gap in this one. But uh, no, the times were all fairly, fairly close. I had an abysmal run uh, on the second one. I'm not sure where I lost time. I just lost considerable amounts of time and I don't know where it all went I, I was down in 10th which was a shocker and I, I've let Peugeot down I'm sorry car the car was much better than that as you saw with a, with Huskies Huskies time the Mustang was only what, point two of a second behind me it's not bad <laughs> all things considered so yeah they were they were the the times for the both runs so we put them all together and here we have the leaderboard unsurprisingly the uh, the winner uh, drove the, the Ford RS200 that thing was very very quick very very well driven um I'm very impressed and surprised by the Zonda to uh, to get into second uh, beat Husky's Peugeot and it's Audi TT uh, Escort Cosworth another another RS200 that was the Dragon one and I was down in seventh uh, it wasn't the, wasn't the greatest of drives from me uh, I, I do struggle it for Jimmy sometimes but uh, yeah it, it was good fun it was something a little bit different it's a little bit more awkward trying to do kind of like a proper rally style thing because Forza is not really designed for it so the times I've ho I've tried to be as accurate as I can with the times um they could be a little bit wonky i yeah i I've, i did the best that i could um so yeah <laughs> i can't really do much more it was good fun though it was something a little bit different and i think everybody enjoyed it it was yeah i i, I like proper rally proper rallying i do like proper rallying in real life as well although it's a little bit boring uh, it's yeah on watching it on tv it's uh, it's a hard thing to film because it's not so much well the stages are so long and everything and this video has been a little bit tricky to make um as well as i said because of like the two different ones and trying to fit everything in and have stuff to talk about is a little bit awkward but um yeah there we go that is some hill climb rallying 
on Forza 4. It is good fun. I recommend you give it a go. Um, but I'm sure most of you will have, uh, will have driven relatively quick cars uh, up for Jimmy. Anyway, that is it for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you have challenges you would like to see us do, then please do leave them in the comments section. I'll have a look through and some of our favourites will be in a video at some point. However, until next time, goodbye.